हेलो गाइस एंड वेलकम टू मेडी सिंप्लीफाइड सो दिस इज अ रिकॉल वीडियो फॉर द रिसेंटली कंडक्टेड नीट पीजी 2022 दिस वीडियो हु शुड वॉच इट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वीडियो आई विल से फॉर द पीपल हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द फॉरेन मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट एग्जाम गोइंग टू बी कंडक्टेड ऑन फोर्थ जून राइट बिकॉज द बोर्ड इज सेम एन बी एंड दे आर मोस्ट मोर लाइकली टू आस्क सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन बोथ ऑफ द एग्जाम Uh, difficulty level is also almost the same right now, so it will be very beneficial for those who are going to attempt the need uh, FMG 2022 this uh, this one you know, on the fourth June, right? And also for those who are willing to see the recall, they must also see whether they marked it right or wrong. So let's begin it. So the first question here, it was the first question was identify the following bone, right? So not this three bone, only this one. this bone was given and uh, if i zoom it you can clearly see this one was incus right so in the middle ear cavity we have this three miss bone mis right malleus incus and stapes it is very important to know their structure now as they have asked about just the bone in the exam so in the fmg exam they can ask about the part of the bone they can point any one of like whether it, the, what is this anterior process this is lateral process right the manubrium of the malleus so first you should identify the three bones that this one is malleus this one is incus and this one is stapes right so you should know all the processes also you can see here there is a depression of facet this is the facet for malleus bone and this one is called as the short process this one is called as the long process and lenticular process also you should know that the long process of incus it is most prone, prone for necrosis most prone for necrosis as uh, it is having the least blood supply right so this are the thing you should know from this question and the answer for this question was uh, the incus bone right so this was the first question from the exam from ent now going further the next question i guess a easy one right what is the question a person with bronchial asthma sinusitis Having Samter stride, they already mentioned that they are, he is having Samter stride. So, which of the following should be avoided? Options were chloramphenicol, aspirin, amoxicillin, and cotrimoxazole. Cotrimoxazole, right? So, the answer here will be aspirin. As we know, the Samter stride, Samter stride, it is bronchial asthma, right? Asthma, polyp, nasal polyp, right? And uh, aspirin sensitivity aspirin sensitivity or you can say allergic to aspirin right aspirin allergy aspirin allergy instead of aspirin if there will be any nsaid also you should go for that answer if and if in the fmg exam there is no option about the aspirin out in and they give a pcm or ibuprofen right so you go for answer that uh, it is basically samter stride is nsaids allergy right it was earlier said that it is nsaids allergy now it is specific that it is allergy of aspirin but if the examiner is uh, too old he can give any nsaid in the option instead of aspirin so you should keep this in mind and what is you should remember the grednigos grednigo stride and also the npc the trotter stride right seen in npc so you should know all this to uh, try it or any other try it in ent for the upcoming exam and the answer in this question for the neat pg it was aspirin <coughs> now going for the the next question again a controversial one uh, according to the recall question was closest structure to the basilar membrane if there is only this question that what is the closest structure to the basilar membrane then the answer will be stria vascularis right some people say that in the question it was written damage to the basilar structure which will be the closest one if this is the question in the question if it is written that the basilar membrane was damaged which is the closest structure to damage the basilar membrane then the answer will be oval window but mostly people were saying that only closest structure to the basilar membrane was asked then the answer will be stria vascularis if the question says that damage to basilar membrane was due to which closest structure then the answer will be oval window so this is a controversial one according to the recon but uh, you should know both of them that 
if the you see know the basilar membrane then the closest one is stravascularis and the helicotrema what is helicotrema it is the last end right where, of the cochlea where the stria vascularis and stria tympani meet each other that in it is seen in cochlea oval window is the place where the stapes uh, come and con for the sound conduction fixation of uh, stapes on the oval window causes otosclerosis so this whole thing you should know not only the correct answer if the options were given the options can be the answer in the upcoming fmg exam so closest structure to the basilar membrane the answer will be stria vascularis but if it was mentioned that the damage to basilar membrane was occurred and which is the closest structure to uh, damage the basilar membrane then the answer will be oval window all right uh, going further very simple one i think identify the condition uh, the options three option i can recall one was myringitis bullosa second is tb and third is som that is secretory otitis media also called as blue ear right so this image is typically of serous otitis media right that is blue ear what all should you what all thing you should know for the upcoming fmg exam uh, one thing is the treatment of all three thing one is acute serous otitis media the treatment is myringotomy all right next is blue ear here the treatment is myringotomy with myringotomy with grommet insertion right we put a grommet in case of a child having blue ear so that the uh, the drain it work, works as a drain and all the pus collected in the middle ear will come out so important thing is in blue ear we do myringotomy in the antero inferior in the antero inferior quadrant of tympanic membrane whereas in asom we do it in the posterior inferior quadrant of tympanic membrane what i am saying exactly this is antero inferior right this is posterior superior and this is posterior inferior okay so in case of uh, blue ear we do myringotomy in this section that is antero inferior quadrant right and we put a grommet here whereas in case of uh, asom we put the tympanic uh, we do the myringotomy in the posterior inferior quadrant this thing you should know and uh, that's it from this question and the answer here was nothing difficult that was serous otitis media going further a clinical scenario was given and it was said that the patient uh, is having complaint that he is unable to open his eye and uh, drooling of saliva was there deviation of angle of mouth was there it was the clear cut case of facial nerve palsy so in question this was the question something like this and there were three options which people can recall one was optic nerve damage of thalamic nerve, da nerve damage and facial nerve damage so this was clear cut scenario of facial nerve palsy so you should know facial nerve palsy for the exam upcoming exams also you should focus on the bell's palsy which is idiopathic facial nerve palsy when you search out all the causes and you don't get any cause of the facial nerve palsy you tell that this is bell's palsy right so this two thing you should remember for the upcoming fmg exam going further the next question uh, it was about a adult male in restaurant suddenly choking of food what will you do right uh, and there was an image that a person was holding his neck due to choking obviously so it was just to confuse right uh, he was just it was just uh, assisting the question not the answer that if a person in restaurant is uh, doing uh, is holding his neck due to choking what will you do the options were back slaps the options were back slaps chest thrust insert the finger and remove the foot this we don't do in any way and hemlich maneuver so there is uh, the answer here was hemlich maneuver one more thing i want you guys to remember that this back slap and uh, back slaps and chest thrust thrust we do in a child in a child or in child less than 1 year we can call it as an infant right if it is more than 1 year we do hemlich maneuver so the answer here will be hemlich maneuver as it is a adult male in a baby what we do we hold the baby and uh, in a prone position and we just do a uh, back slaps we usko teacher thappi marte hain and then uh, we try uh, we uh, try that the food particle which has been choked removes gets out 
so that we do in infants less than one year child and in an adult we'll obviously do a hemorrhage mammogram now next question post covid patient who is known diabetic presents with a severe facial pain and loosening of teeth what is the next step of in investigation right which is the best step if it would have been asked the answer will be mri head right obviously we do mri head to know the extent of the damage in the brain or the sinus in the rhinocerebral mucormycosis whereas uh, first we do nasal swab to detect the organism that is muker which is aseptate hyphae we see aseptate hyphae right in mucormycosis with irregular branching right this we see in a mucormycosis or we see it in uh, rhizopus absidia and mica muker here we see aseptate highway so we will uh, here the question was post covid patient who is known diabetic presents with a facial pain and loosening of teeth this is uh, towards the micro mucor mucor mycosis which is the most common complication nowadays seen in the immunocompromised patient post covid so what is the next step or the next investigation it was asked so the answer here should be nasal swab of mucor mycosis if it was a question which was saying which is the best investigation to do in this condition then the answer should be mri head right so about diabetes for the upcoming exam i want you to remember two thing right uh, in diabetes ent we get only two questions related to this uh, one was if it is a adult adult person with diabetes right and a ear disease so it will be malignant otitis externa caused by pseudomonas aeruginosa pseudomonas aeruginosa right and if it is a, a diabetic patient in young in young right and uh, it is a disease of nose right then it is mucor mycosis now there is an exception nowadays that if it is a covid patient with diabetes and he is coming you with blackening in the uh, orbital area in the nose area then it is a mucor mycosis right so this is the thing you should keep remember uh, keep in mind while going for the fmg exam so diabetic adult ear disease malignant otitis externa and uh, young with diabetes nose disease mucor mycosis in covid post covid complication it will be mucor mycosis remember that in the upcoming exam uh, there will be a there is a chance of getting questions from covid because in this exam uh, the neat pg 2022 we had many questions from covid right one was uh, an rbm mask image from anesthesia right one was this mucor mycosis right and uh, one more question was there uh, it is a controversial question from derma derma person can answer that whether it was tenogen uh, tenogen effluvium or a male pattern bald uh, female pattern baldness right the question was saying that the uh, female had covid 8 months ago and she is having hair fall from the last 4 month so i don't know the answer will be most probably told by the derma person so this exam was having right three to four questions from covid which is approximately i will say 2% right so make make sure that you know something about covid when you when you are going for the exam at least the common thing right also uh, remember expected question from covid that biomedical waste management bmw right biomedical waste management of covid right covid uh, swab covid vial this thing can be asked so i want you guys to give some time at least half an hour or one hour two three days before exam for the covid related topics also going further the last question this is also a controversial question a boy in second decade right of life one thing complaints of bleeding from the nose right and nasal obstruction on examination a polypoidal mass passing from the coana and extending till the nasopharynx what will be your diagnosis diagnosis was asked right so the options were rhinosporidiosis angiofibroma entrocoanal polyp and mucor mycosis so rhinosporidiosis obviously not the answer and mucor mycosis also not the answer the, the option which were 
among which the answer will be it will be angiofibroma or anterocondyl polyp what is here towards the diagnosis of angiofibroma it is a second decade child right second decade boy we have seen many questions from angiofibroma about 14 year old boy sorry 14 year old boy so this was going towards the angiofibroma also bleeding right and uh, the next thing about anterocondyl polyp uh, we see that it arises from the maxillary antrum it goes to the coana right the backward backward opening of the nose and <coughs> sorry and it extends till the nasopharynx yes so this clinical scenario it can be either angiofibroma or uh, anterocondyl polyp but uh, if you want to me, me to answer this question i will go with an anterocondyl polyp uh, what will be the what i want you to know that you should remember the angiofibroma everything and also about the intracornal polyp and ethmoidal polyp so i want you guys to re revise it somewhat this image was given right uh, the endoscopic image so from the image it was difficult obviously the question is whether intracornal polyp bleeds the answer is yes the intracornal bleeds intracornal polyp bleeds so the next question is whether the intracornal polyp occurs in the second decade the answer is yes the intracornal polyp occurs in the young young and young adults and adolescent age so the answer can be intracornal polyp or it can be angiofibroma totally depends upon the examiner from where he is asking the question or from which mindset he gave the question so what we should do we should learn about the difference between the ethmoidal we know everything about angiofibroma i guess right so what is more important we should know about this two thing that is ethmoidal polyp and anterocornal polyp ethmoidal polyp is seen in adults and anterocornal polyp seen in children and adolescent right so second decade yes it can be the answer right it is allergy is most common cause for anterocornal polyp it is the infection which is the most common cause multiple bunch of grapes it is unilateral also the image was saying that it was unilateral polypoidal mass in the question it was there easily seen on anterior rhinoscopy right because it comes from the uh, nasal openings from the anteriorly it arises from the maxillary antrum seen commonly in the posterior, posterior nasal examination and x-ray pns also shows maxillary uh, hazy maxillary antrum right this ethmoidal polyp is usually bilateral whereas anterocornal polyp is usually unilateral recurrence is uncommon in anterocornal polyp recurrence is common in the ethmoidal polyp for ethmoidal polyp we do polypectomy whereas for the anterocornal polyp we do a fancy named surgery that is caldwell luke surgery in recurrent cases so that was all from my side about the ent recall questions i hope this was useful for the people who are going to appear for the fmg exam just to know the topics from where the examiner had asked question in ent so thank you for watching this question, uh, video hope you like it do not forget to like share and subscribe my channel medi simplified thank you